Hi guys, uh, this is uh, one of my first video blogs um, which I thought I'd do in response to the first question we had on uh, the forum today. Um, it was all about what happens after a crow's feet injection and some of the unusual or slightly challenging cases that you might get and what to do with them. I thought the best way to do it would be to work from superior to inferior um, and, and describe little issues that can happen at each point along uh, after you've done uh, an injection around the crow's feet or the orbicularis oculi muscle. <clears throat> um, the first thing is remember it's a circular muscle. It goes all the way around and it has an impact. Uh, there are lines that are caused by it at every point along its, uh, its circumference. Um, mostly obviously what we're treating is the lines from, uh, from about this point to that point. So that's where most people get most of their lines. Um, but it gets more, that's also probably the easiest place to treat in terms of, in terms of getting simple outcomes. But the more challenging outcomes happen also uh, inferiorly and superiorly. And I'll talk you through some of those. Uh, first of all, if we start at the top, um, this, this injection point here is the one that you need to be careful of for, uh, because the lacrimal gland is directly underneath it. So remember your one centimetre margin uh, and anything around here is a little bit of a higher risk for getting some Botox effect in the lacrimal gland, uh, which basically means a dry eye. Um, most people, because the muscle is strongest in the lateral portion, there's not a lot to do here. You might do a, a just above if you feel a little suture on the skull, that's usually your most medial point. And if you do one injection there, it also helps you get a little bit of an eyebrow lift. But what happens if you've got lines above that point, which are being caused by the orbicularis oculi muscle? So it's not that common, but you do get people where the, the smile lines, when they smile, actually causes creasing above the eye. So that's a really superior um, muscle that is really strong and causes lines, um, but it's in the danger zone. So it's closer to the lacrimal gland and it's also closer to the, um, to the, to the eyelid. So you, you're risking the two, one of the two main side effects we try and avoid, which is a dry eye or a droopy eyelid. You can treat that area, but it's obviously with caution. So that means small doses. So I would say maybe one unit of Botox or two units of Azalora Dysport. Um, or one unit of Bocature if you're using that, but making sure that you get it in the, in the right plane of the skin. So the orbicularis oculi is the most superficial muscle and it has insertions in the surface of the skin. So you really need only a very superficial injection. Blanching of the skin is acceptable in this case. And in fact, that makes it slightly safer. You're less likely to be getting any into a lacrimal gland or in, in a plane that could trickle down and connect with the eyelid still a risk so always always discuss it with your clients as a possible outcome but it's much less likely if you get those planes correct um, next thing would be if you treat that same point and in someone who's got a line very close to their eyebrow so when they raise their eyebrows there's a line there's a crease that's formed right here those people need to be warned that that crease could get slightly worse they're not common though most people have most of their lines centrally but if you do see that crease make sure that you warn them um, that that crease could get a little bit worse and your treatment options would be uh, either a tiny dose of Botox here, which obviously could soften the arch of the eyebrow, which would be an unwanted effect, or if it's, um, uh, well, you can fill it. You can put some dermal filler in there if you've done the advanced training. Uh, next portion down would be, um, as I said, lateral injections, usually pretty simple. Um, you can improve a line there. Just remember that's the one that might um, interfere with your lateral rectus muscle if you don't respect your margins. And then the inferior point is probably the most difficult. It's the most difficult because if you look at our model again, you've got your zygomatic muscles which interfere with that area in some cases much more than the orbicularis oculi. So if you're trying to treat a line over here, that's actually been caused by the zygomatic muscles. You're not going to get anywhere by putting, you can put as much Botox as you want into that point when the energy is coming from these muscles here pulling up, it's going to be pretty much useless. Um, you'll get an improvement as always in the orbicularis muscle fibers when you treat them. But if you're, if you're going to treat someone, make sure that you've explained that some of the energy comes from the zygomatic muscle, which, is the, which I describe as the big muscles in your cheek. Uh, and you can even demonstrate this by pushing with your finger and say, look, if I push with my finger, you'll see some energy causes a crease here. So you cannot therefore get all the result just by treating this muscle over here because not all the energy is coming from that muscle. So that's an important one to explain. The next thing is what happens underneath the eye. 
this is an extra side effect uh, which is caused in some people because there's a tightening effect when you smile on the skin underneath your eye. So a really big smile here um, will pull the skin underneath your eye slightly, which removes lines and softens them. So there are a small minority, and I can think probably I've only seen three or four myself who've actually noticed it, who notice that the line underneath their eye seems worse when they've had, their, had Botox treated over here. So that can be because you're no longer tightening the skin underneath the eye when you smile. Um, there's not much you can do about that one because it's too rare for it to be worth talking about to every client because there's so many other things you've got to warn them about. Um, when it does happen, you've just got to explain that it's a, it's, it's a choice really, which lines bother you most. Some people will decide actually it's better to get rid of these smile lines than it is to treat that line. And some people will, um, uh, will rather not have the treatment again. So it's, it's, it's up to them really, uh, but it's, it's a fairly unpredictable side effect. Um, there probably is a way, but I haven't seen enough myself to, to actually predict um, which people are going to suffer from that side effect, but it's it's going to be difficult to spot But but it is a normal outcome of the Botox treatment So one of the ways that you can sorry, there's a there's a there's, a th there's another thing Which is the connection between treated and untreated cheek So if you've got your zygomatic muscle pulling up here and you've got your orbicularis oculi that causes most of the lines and you treat that so that there's hardly any movement here But then you've got a lot of movement here where the cheek is connected to that area you can get a little ledge so it's a little bit like pinching the cheek and you you will see occasionally it's quite a it's like a deep line connected with a smooth area uh, and that little ledge is a is one of these botox um, looks that you're trying to avoid so um, you can reduce the effect of that by putting less botox into the area so if you're normally putting a four or a five unit dose of botox or a 10 unit of azalor try reducing the dose to half or even if you're putting four injections in try reducing to three injections so that you get um, a smoother a smoother transition between moving orbicularis oculi and and where the cheek normally meets and um, so that when you when you smile you're getting a little tug which is stopping that deeper groove from falling from forming um, so those are the main things um, I can't think of much else to do with it. Oh yeah, there's one other thing, which is uh, trans the, w the increase in resting tone that you can get when you half treat any muscle. So sometimes treating this area increases bunny lines here. And it's something you won't know until after you've done the treatment and your client comes back two weeks later and says, I seem to have developed more lines here. This is not uncommon at all. What it takes is probably a five unit of azalor or or two units of botox you could put just a little bit there which just does isn't designed to freeze the nasalis muscle or to freeze any strands of the orbicularis oculi it's designed to decrease the resting tone so that you've still got movement there but it just takes the edge off it when you're not meaning to do the expression it still looks smooth uh, so those are the key things to know about those are the slightly tricky things with the orbicularis oculi muscle there are no doubt other things which you might discover which are even rarer um, and please get in touch and ask us or share if you've got anything else to say um, around this muscle. I'll be interested to hear back from you with your experiences. Um, but I hope that helps you with treatments around the eyes and I'll see you hopefully on our next, uh, next video. Um, this is my first video so obviously any questions you put on the forum what I'll try and do over time is answer as many of them as possible uh, like I'm doing now. Um, thanks very much, hopefully see you soon.